Hello friends, uh, welcome back to NPTEL online certification course on soil and water conservation engineering. I am Rajendra Singh, professor in agriculture and food engineering department IIT Kharagpur and we are now in week 1 lecture 2 and the topic is soil erosion causes and types. Just to give you an idea uh, uh, that in this week we started with introduction in the previous lecture. This particular lecture is on causes and types of soil erosion and in lecture 3 we will go through factors affecting soil erosion and effects of soil erosion. Lecture 4 will be on soil erosion mechanics and lecture 5 on water erosion control measures. Now coming to causes of soil erosion. The, the one of the foremost regions of or causes of soil erosion is destruction of natural protective cover and that happens by indiscriminate cutting down of trees and what happens is that when you cut down the trees then obviously we also lose the plant canopy and basically when plant canopy is not there though there will be no interception of uh, falling rainfall and of course uh, in the process there will be no dissipation of kinetic energy. That simply means that when the raindrops will reach the soil surface, they will have a higher velocity and higher level of uh, kinetic energy and because of that uh, the soil will be highly vulnerable to erosion. The other region is overgrazing of the vegetative cover. The, if we allow overgrazing of vegetative cover, then a similar effect takes place. That means, what we do in the process is that we expose the soil surface and once the soil surface is exposed and when the raindrops takes raindrops fall on the soil surface with higher level of kinetic energy, then obviously, the erosion uh, there is a higher chances of erosion. And the third region is forest fire, which obviously occurs only in forest areas and during summer season. But here also we lose canopy cover because in the forest fire the plants or trees are completely or the leaves are completely burnt and also not only canopy cover, but also the surface whatever vegetation is there on the surface that is also lost. So, that means it is a combination of indiscriminate cutting down of trees where we lose the canopy and overgrazing of vegetative surface where we expose the land surface. So, in forest fire we have a combination of this and that simply means that kind of area is highly vulnerable to soil erosion. Uh, the next cause could be the improper land use and improper land use could be the barren land subject to action of rain and wind. A land which is left open without any kind of cultivation activities that is refers to as a barren land and in such land because there is no activity taking place, there will be no protective cover on the surface and that simply means uh, when the rainfall occurs, the surface is exposed completely to the raindrop impact or if there are, the, there are loose particles on the surface then wind will have a tendency to take away the soil particles. That simply means a barren land is always highly susceptible to erosion. Then when some land is under cultivation, then if we use the improper cultivation or we use improper cropping pattern, then also we expose the land surface. Uh, and what happens that if we select a cropping pattern in such a way or if we do cultivation in such a way where we in between rows we allow lot of uh, exposed surface area then obviously if the rainfall takes place on the, that particular area then there will be erosion and also because there is exposed surface the water flow will take place in there and that means there again there will be higher chances of erosion the other improper land use could be in the form of cultivation along the land slope. So, if we cultivate along the land slope, so obviously in between the roads there will be some space for water flow and because of the slope this flowing water will have a very 
higher velocity and because of higher velocity it will have higher kinetic energy and it will be having erosive capacity will be much higher. So, that is why any kind of improper land use be in the form of barren land, be in the form of improper cultivation or cropping pattern or cultivation along the land slope all make soil susceptible to erosion. Then coming to types of soil erosion. Soil erosion can be broadly classified into two categories that is geological erosion and accelerated erosion and then accelerated erosion can be further classified into two categories water erosion and wind erosion. Of course, we saw that water and wind are agents of erosion. So, based on the agents accelerated erosion could be classified as water erosion and wind erosion. So, do remember that overall soil erosion is classified either as geological erosion or accelerated erosion and accelerated erosion is further classified as water erosion and wind erosion. Coming to geological erosion, geological erosion is also referred to as normal or natural erosion because uh, basically it is a natural phenomena and it is a natural process responsible for the formation of and the loss of soil simultaneously. So, basically we know that it is the weathering of rocks that is responsible for formation as well as the soil loss. So, basically this it is natural we say it natural because the formation of soil at the loss of soil they go simultaneously and they are more or less balanced. So, that is why it is referred to as a natural process. And it is very slow process and continuous process and that goes often unnoticed. So, it is so slow and continuously occurring that we do not find any change uh, with our naked eyes and that is why it is very difficult to notice any kind of geological erosion. And all the topographical features that we see on the land surface like stream channels, valleys and so on all these are formed because of this geological erosion. So, basically geological erosion is normal or natural erosion, it is a very slow process and it is responsible for creation or formation of all the topographical features we see on the land surface. And there are certain great examples of geological erosion around the world, one of the greatest example is Grand Canyon in Erosina, USA. And which is referred to as one of the geological wonders of the world. And basically this uh, Grand Canyon is formed by the entrenchment of Colorado River as you can see here the Colorado River is uh, I mean it has been it is bifurcated in uh, two tributaries as you can see at least. And uh, the important thing is that or the historical part is that that the Grand Canyon it is said that the Grand Canyon displays rocks from about 200 million to 2 billion years old. So, that simply means it is a place of history where you can see rocks that are 200 million to 2 billion years of age. There are several other examples if you look in India then also we have a great example in the form of marble rocks Jabalpur Madhya Pradesh in India. And Marble rocks basically are gorge on Narvada river and here the river narrows to a almost a width of 10 meters and carves through a large area of white marbles creating a beautiful gorge of about 3 kilometers in length. So, as you can see here this is the Narvada river flowing and either side you can see these marble rocks and this spectral phenomena is over 3 kilometer of length. So, if you get an opportunity go there and do remember that is it's a geological erosion wonder existing in India. If we come to the other part that is accelerated erosion, then accelerated erosion is just reverse of that and that is why it is referred to as anthropogenic or man induced erosion that was natural geological was natural this is man induced. And it is activated by human activities 
that bring changes in natural cover and soil conditions. Just now we saw what are the causes. So, if you cut the trees indiscriminately, if you uh, improperly cultivate the land, if you open the land barren, keep the land barren, if you uh, cultivate along the slope, I mean there are several ways uh, humankind impacts uh, erosion and brings changes in natural cover and soil conditions uh, which result in accelerated erosion. The name itself says that it is much faster and soil removal here is much faster than the natural soil formation process. We saw in the case of geological erosion that it was a slow process and the soil loss and soil formation was almost balanced, but in this case soil removal is much faster than the natural soil formation process and that is why it is more clearly visible to naked eye. All around us we can see some kind of erosion happening. And of course, if erosion takes place it leads to serious environmental damages uh, that will as we move in the course we will see we will get the elaboration on this. Come, come, remaining in types of soil erosion, we already saw that accelerated erosion can be of two types water erosion and wind erosion based on the uh, agents of erosion and water erosion can be further classified into five groups. The first one is raindrop splash erosion, the second is sheet erosion, third is rail erosion, gully erosion and stream bank erosion. So, erosion if you see we classify once again broadly it is geological erosion and accelerated erosion. Accelerated erosion, water erosion, wind erosion and we did water erosion there are five types that is raindrop splash, sheet, rill, gully and stream bank erosion. So, these are the types of erosion which you are expected to uh, remember that what are the types of erosion you should be able to recall immediately. To start with the first one that is raindrop splash erosion. This is the first stage of erosion process and it is the primary cause of soil detachment and soil disintegration. So, what happens is that when rain takes place the raindrops they impact the bare soil wherever bare soil is there be it barren land be it improperly cultivated land uh, wherever we get bare soil it basically it impacts with high kinetic energy and that causes splash basically. And in this process what happens the raindrop impact breaks up the soil aggreg aggregates and as a result individual soil particles are splashed as you can see that uh, there when the raindrop takes place uh, hits uh, the soil surface then obviously there will be some kind of a splash and because of that the loose soil particles will be taken care of. In this process another phenomenon takes place that the soil particles which are there on the top they are of course they can be carried away by flowing water when in subsequently and of course, what happens that these loose particles also clog the soil pores the soil surface the pores on the soil surface and you remember we previous lecture we saw uh, something called infiltration. So, whenever that happens that infiltration takes uh, the soil pores are blocked then obviously, infiltration redu gets reduced and that results in increase runoff and in when the runoff is more the loose soil particles which are there on the soil surface they will be taken away. So, this is what this is referred to as raindrop splash erosion. Next is sheet erosion which is the uniform removal of soil in thin layers during the overland flow process. Now, we, we, we in the previous lecture we saw when the rainfall occurs it first satisfies the infiltration requirement of the soil and once infiltration capacity is filled up then water starts flowing on the surface in the form of overland flow. And once the overland flow takes place then if there are loose soil particles on the surface then the flow will take the soil particles away. And what happens that in this process the most fertile, fertile soil particles that contain most of the available nutrients and organic matter in the soil 
they are taken away, they are lost because we know that it is a top soil which is always the most fertile soil and because that is the soil, these are the soil particles that get loosened in the process of raindrop impact and they are lying on the surface. So, overland flow will have tendency to take this most fertile soil away. And typically it occurs gradually and goes unnoticed until most of the productive top soil has been lost because it takes place in the form of sheet, it is very difficult to really notice it. So, it goes unnoticed for a long period of time unless you start seeing patches like this on the soil surface. So, that is a very slow process, but very dangerous process because it takes away all the fertile, fertile soil uh, away from us. And overgrazed and cultivated soils are most vulnerable to sheet erosion that is wherever or wherever soil is exposed or soil particles are lying loose on the surface they are most vulnerable to sheet erosion. The next is rill erosion. So, if the overland flow process continues, its erosive action results in the formation of shallow channels which are known as rills. So, we saw that first the overland flow process will, uh, will take away the soil particles and it will create some kind of patches and if we allow this to happen, then formally it might result in the formation of uh, these small rivulets or channels which are referred to as rills. And once these rills are formed, the water will have tendency to uh, have a constant concentrated flow through these rills and that means it will cause soil erosion there and that is referred to as rill erosion. That is the third level of erosion, water erosion that is rill erosion. It is very common in bare agricultural land, over grazed land and in freshly cultivated land that is wherever soil surface is exposed, wherever it is possible uh, raindrop impact uh, could make, make impact or wherever sheet flow could remove uh, fertile, top fertile soils, then obviously uh, this uh, there the chances of real erosion are more. But one good thing is that they are so small that they can be removed with primary, primary tillage implements. That means, if you uh, do simply plowing of the land, then also these get smoothened out. So, these reels will be lost if plowing takes place on this surface area. So, that is the good thing is that uh, they can be quickly uh, taken care of by primary tillage implements. And it is the intermediate stage between sheet erosion and gully erosion, which is the more serious form of erosion. And if rills are not destroyed and the detachment continues, then these becomes wider and deeper. So, obviously, if rills, you saw rills, they were much finer, much smaller, it is a much projected picture. But if we continue this, then obviously, if, if this, the detachment continues, then they become wider and deeper and then they result in the formation of gullies as you can see here this is formation of gullies and they are much larger than the rills and that is why they cannot be smoothened out by normal cultivation that is the important. So, uh, as long as it is rill with our cult usual primary tillage uh, implements we can take care of them but we allow that stage to pass then probably it goes beyond control. And this is referred to as advanced and last stage of erosion. So, beyond that I mean as far as water erosion concerned under normal circumstances this is the last stage of erosion. And in the gully erosion process there are two main processes involved waterfall erosion and channel erosion. And the waterfall erosion basically refers to the overland flow falling into the gully at the head end that undercuts it and results in up slope extension of gully. So, if this is the gully head and if slope is in this direction, so if water continuously fall it falls from this direction into the gully, then it will have the tendency to undercut the head and this gully will have a tendency to move in the upward direction or get extended into the upward direction and that is result because of the waterfall erosion. The other one is the channel erosion that water one starts flowing through the gully 
it erodes the bed and sides causing wall collapse and slumping of the side wall. So, basically uh, when water falls and it starts flowing through the gully then obviously it will have a tendency to deepen and widen the gully. So, gully size goes on increasing if we do not take uh, control measures to control. So, these are the two processes water flow erosion, waterfall erosion which is responsible for upstream extension of gully and channel erosion that is responsible for widening and deepening of gully. Coming to stages of gully erosion, uh, there, there are four stages of gully erosion. The first one is the formation stage that is channel erosion by downward score of topsoil that is we, we already saw that uh, there is a waterfall erosion, there is channel erosion. Waterfall erosion is responsible for upstream extension of the gully where is channel erosion is responsible for widening and deepening of the gully. So, if we allow that the downward score of topsoil then basically that basically is conversion of reel into gully that is basically reel erosion we saw where there is small rivulets were there. So, they are converted into gully. The next is the development stage where consists of upstream movement of gully head and enlargement of gully in width and depth. So, similar process here, but in a much larger scale the waterfall and channel erosion. So, because of that wide, uh, the, the gully uh, uh, extends in length as well as in width and depth. So, this is what waterfall and channel erosion takes place. Then a stage comes third stage which is referred to hailing stage and that happens when vegetation growth starts in the gully. So, after certain time when gully is there it continues, but with passage of time some kind of grasses etcetera will start growing in the gully. And then when if this vegetative cover is spreads over the gully surface such that gully reaches a stable gradient and walls reach a stable slope then it is referred to as stabilization stage. So, if we can allow this vegetation to grow then ultimately a time will come then the entire gully cross section that will be covered by this vegetation and that simply means that that will act as a protective cover to the gully that means there will be no further possibility of deepening and widening or cutting of the soil in the gully itself and that will be the stabilization stage. So, these are four major stages of gully uh, development formation stage where from reel to gully conversion takes place, development stage where because of waterfall and channel erosion upstream movement and, and uh, deepening and widening of gully takes place, healing stage where vegetation starts growing and finally, the stabilization stage where vegetation growth has reached a level where uh, no further gully development uh, takes place. Coming to classification of gullies, gullies can be classified based on shape and uh, based on size. So, if we take based on shape, gullies are classified as U shaped and V shaped. The U shaped is formed where both the top soil and subsoil have the same resistance against erosion. That simply means that the soil characteristics along the depth are more or less same that is they offer similar resistance and that is why when erosion takes place it is almost uniform in shape and that is why the gully takes a U shape. On the other hand V shape is formed where the subsoil has more resistance than topsoil against erosion. So, if the subsoil or the bottom layers they offer higher level of resistance to soil erosion in comparison to the uh, to top soils then obviously, there will be more erosion in top and lesser erosion on the bottom side and that is why the shape which we will get is uh, resembles letter V and that is why it is V shaped. So, U shape takes place when the soil characteristics are uniform uh, along the depth and V shape takes place where the lower soils offer higher resistance as compared to the top soil. The based on size gullies are classified as 
small, medium, and large. And they are referred to as small when the depth of the gully is less than 1 meter and the drainage area that is the area that is drained that is that drains to gully is around uh, 2 hectares less than 2 hectares. It is called medium when depth lies between 1 and 5 meters and the drainage area is lies between 2 and 20 hectares. And it based on size it is says a large when the depth is greater than 5 meters and drainage area is greater than 20 hectares. So, gully is, can be classified based on shape as u-shaped and v-shaped and based on size as small, medium and large. Now, coming to the last type of water erosion that is stream bank erosion and as the name itself sub suggests it refers to the scouring and undercutting of the soil below the water surface in a stream. So, that means uh, in a flowing stream uh, it is the phenomena continues the water will have the, 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 the current water currents will have a tendency to undercut the both the bed as well as the sites and because of that <coughs> whatever erosion takes place that is refers to as stream bank erosion. Another phenomena that is responsible for uh, uh, stream bank erosion is uh, water flowing over the sides of the stream. So, if if the sides of the stream <coughs> if the sides of a stream they are bare soils because of uh, 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 whatever human activities are going on if because of that the soil is bare and if the flow comes from this bare soil uh, to the stream it joins the stream then obviously with it it will carry a lot of soil particles. So, that is also uh, responsible for the and it is a natural process, but rate at which it occurs may be influenced by human activities. That means uh, very clearly if on the banks there are uh, uh, areas where vegetation has been removed or overgrazing has taken place or cultivation faulty cultivation practices have been adopted, then obviously there will be loose soil particles they will be taken, taken to the soil and that means the rate of so, rate of uh, soil erosion which will be much larger. So, this is the uh, fifth part type of water erosion. Then we come to the second in day, uh, 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 second uh, agent that is wind erosion and obviously it refers to the removal natural removal of soil from an area due to wind. So, what uh, in the previous cases we saw it was water that was agent in this case it is wind that is agent. And it mostly occurs in low rainfall areas when soil moisture content is at wilting point or below. So, that means wherever soil particles are dry, there is no moisture, they are light in weight and they are loose, then obviously they are more susceptible to uh, blowing away uh, with the wind and that is why they are more susceptible to wind erosion. And it may be caused by light wind that rolls soil particles along the surface through to a strong wind that lifts a large volume of soil particles into the air to create dust storm. So, if the when the wind is, wind is light it basically results in rolling of soil particles rolling of soil particles. So, basically wind is very light and soil particles are rolling then obviously they go unnoticed we do not really really notice uh, if uh, wind erosion is taking place. But when the strong wind is there then obviously a large chunk of soil is lifted in the atmosphere and uh, in the form of dust storm and then it becomes more visible and then we really see wind erosion in effect. But effectively whenever wind is blowing on an area which is dry or where loose soil particles are there they are susceptible to wind erosion that is wind erosion takes place there almost all the time. Then question comes how do people affect erosion? We have seen that people are affecting erosion, but uh, I mean just to remind us once again how do we affect soil erosion? Of course, in the form of deforestation. So, already we have seen if we deforest that means we are removing the canopy cover that means we are exposing the soil to raindrop impact or uh, flowing water and that means erosion will be more. 
then next way we impact soil erosion is through residential or commercial construction all around you whenever you see some kind of construction activity going on then you will see that huge amount of loose soil particles are available and if that happens obviously that area is susceptible to erosion. Then again if we allow we use the traditional cultivation practices like plowing or tillage where we as you can see that during the process of plowing here or any kind of tillage operation you can see a lot of wind a uh, lot of soil is already be, be, being moved and in this case as you can see that lot of soil is exposed left exposed and if rainfall occurs then obviously lot of these soil particles in the in the overland flow the lot of these soil particles will be uh, taken away in the form of erosion so that is what uh, so we have seen what are the causes and what are the types of erosion in this class and then we'll further move to next steps in the next phase thank you very much